Thank you, Mr. Chairman, sir, for calling upon me on behalf of the Biju Janta Dal to uh, speak on the uh, tax and non-tax proposals in the finance bill of 2022-23. Uh, uh, first, the tax proposals in the finance bill. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, it's a matter of dismay, I think, if not alarm, for all of India to have seen what we did during the UP elections when income tax raids took place in Kanpur and we found piles and piles of cash. It took uh, the income tax department some five days to count the cash. And even then, I think there were no figures that were matching. At some point, it was 180 crores. At some point, 230 crores, 235 crores. I mean, this is a mountain of cash which is floating around in our economy. The Honorable Prime Minister, uh, in a lightning strike on the 8th of November 2016, called for demonetization. The objectives of demonetization were removal of black money and bringing in a digital economy, was to do away with fake currency, was to curb terrorist financing. My Chief Minister, Mr. Naveen Patnaik ji, believing in the Prime Minister's uh, noble objectives, was one of the first Chief Ministers to come out openly in support of demonetization. I think the Prime Minister's dream and his vision has been belied. I think the Treasury benches, which are unfortunately empty as I speak today, will be the first to understand and recognize that the Prime Minister's vision has been completely belied. Not only did the 16 lakh crores then, which were demonetized, come back in its entirety. Supriya Suleji asked a question. I'd like to ask the government how much black money came back. Oh, all the black money came back. Nicely laundered, cleaned up, washed up, laundered. So all the black money came back. In fact, my memory serves me right, some 30,000 crore more than the issued currency also came back. So which means 30,000 fake currency also came back into the government system. And the government is still silent on how much tax they managed to actually get back from the laundered money. I don't think that's because they're saying it's all wrapped up in litigation. I'm sure it'll be wrapped up in litigation for the next 20 years. What is the position today? It was 16 lakh crores of cash money in circulation in 2016. Today, it has gone up to 29 lakh crores. It's almost doubled. This is the position today with regard to cash currency in circulation. Somewhere, this government has to acknowledge that it has been no different than the Congress government of the 60s, 70s, 80s, because of which there is a legacy of black money in this country. Because in those days, I remember when I was a child, I used to be told my father was in the Swatantra Party, which always asked for liberal tax policies against the Congress's so-called Fabian Socialism. My father used to tell us that the tax slab at one time in India was 110 percent. If you earned 100 rupees, you paid 110 rupees in tax. This was the tax slab, with income tax, wealth tax, all other surcharges included. Which is what has given rise to black money in this country, which is what has given rise to aversion to paying tax in this country, and no matter what Mrs. Dugal, who is herself from the department and therefore has a much rosier picture about the department than most of us have, Mrs. Dugal said the department has now become much more uh, user-friendly, able-friendly, etc., etc. I don't think anything of that sort has happened. We are still in a country of 130 plus crores. There are only 2.5 crore tax assesses. And tax assesses are not taxpayers. The taxpayers, I think, are barely run into some 25 odd lakhs. The rest file nil returns. So they are actually not taxpayers. They are only for the namesake, their tax assesses. So taxpayers, therefore, out of 130 crores, is 25 lakh direct taxes. And out of that, only 8,000, regrettably, 
are over that figure of 5 crores a year. Out of that 8,000, let me tell you that 2,500 are lawyers and chartered accountants. So, therefore, we are proud to be part of that 8,000. But the point is, that figure of 8,000 in this country of 130 crores, looking to the mountain of cash in circulation, that figure of 8,000 should actually be no less than 80,000, if not 8 lakhs, honestly, if we look at the honest truth. So, therefore, something is seriously still wrong with our tax compliance because something is seriously still wrong with the method of tax collection in this country. The government must be the first to come to terms with it, and I'm sure the Prime Minister who wants to change all that was wrong with the Congress, and much was wrong with what the Congress did for 60, 70 years in this country, if he wishes to actually clean the system out, he has to start right at the bottom. There is an army of tax collectors out there which is not necessary. You don't have to give them jobs and pensions. They are there only to get jobs and pensions. That army can be whittled down to 25% of what it is today. If you simplify your tax procedures, you make out two clear slabs of 15%, 20%, no exemptions, 15% for, the, for, the, for, the, for a below a particular threshold, 20% above a particular threshold. You don't need 10,000 exemptions and therefore, five, what, five and a half lakh people to adjudicate on a daily basis. And we know what happens. All this faceless as, uh, uh, assessment and all, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I've been a taxpayer for the last 37 years. So therefore, people who actually pay those taxes know what the actual position is. So all this faceless assessment, etc., is complete hogwash. And I'm saying this on the floor of the House. That's as far as taxation is concerned. Therefore, it's a matter of regret that the government has actually done very little to ensure that black money is weeded out of the system, number one. Number two, I'm a, again, I was dismayed to hear what the uh, Treasury benches, Mr. Nishikant Dubey, who is normally one, a very close friend of mine and one of the best articulate speakers on behalf of the Treasury benches today had to say about cryptocurrency. That Cryptocurrency has to be banned sooner rather than later. The government has spoken in multiple voices on this. There is rampant confusion. I'm a member of the Standing Committee. We have deliberated on this. We've heard expert opinion on this. Our Alu Ji, one of the most esteemed members of that committee, was one of the most vigorous cross-examiners of people who we examined. Today, to ban cryptocurrency is the equivalent of banning the internet. It is an idea whose time has come. So I'm vastly surprised that somebody as sharp as Nishikan Dubey and Supriya Suleji are advocating a ban in this country. What this government has in fact done by this, the, the notion of a sin activity, it's as though cryptocurrency dealing is something sinful. What the government has done with that is created so much confusion and unfortunately the RBI governor who's, you know, one of the, one of the brightest and best bureaucrats of this country has seen, he has gone on record to say this is just hot air. So therefore, there is complete confusion. There is hot air on behalf of the RBI governor who is to in charge of uh, issuing digital currency, so which will be equally, I think, hot air. And the government which wants to therefore tax the hot air. And the government has gone on to a 30% slab on the basis that it must be at a higher this thing than equity uh, gains because it is some kind of sin. The 1% TDS again, lakhs of transactions taking place on a daily basis. Industry was saying, yes, you want to trace, you want to track. Have it at 0.01%, instead the government goes on to 1%, which is a thousand times more. So therefore, these are again, it's symptomatic of complete confusion in the minds of the government, unfortunately, as far as this is concerned. I know I don't have too much time. So therefore, I would urge the government that bill was, is already one year old, it's pending. We in the Finance uh, Standing Committee were expecting this bill to be brought to the committee last August or September. We, that's what we were told. It's still not ready, which means the mandarins of, this, of, the, of the Finance Ministry are totally at sixes and sevens. Therefore, I would suggest get a proper task force with professionals involved who will draft this, because otherwise this bill is going to be a disaster. And like the IBC, which has now been, uh, or the Companies Act, which has now been amended eight times in six years. This is just going to keep having to be amended. Uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, on the non-tax proposal side, 
just a very couple of very quick things. We, are, we are welcome the disinvestment of Air India at 51,000 crores. This was long overdue. One of the boldest steps of this government. I congratulate the government. But I think the government, again, has fallen short by not being bold enough to go ahead and, and, and disinvest all the other white elephants that the government is holding on to. There is no reason why the government, which has such a brute majority it, and, and, and such extraordinary goodwill, which has been shown in the, in the last uh, you know, five set of elections, in four they have swept, they've got great goodwill. So there is no reason why they can't encash this goodwill and go right ahead and do what they had to do by way of this investment. That's one of the real disappointments of this government. Therefore, they need to seriously rethink their disinvestment policy. And the Prime Minister on day one had talked about land monetization, which is, again, one of the critical areas of the Indian economy, which is, again, languished completely in the times of the Congress, uh, 60, 60, 70 years. On the contrary, the maximum amount of land encroachment has taken place during Congress times. And, and I think it has been actively supported by their uh, local leaders. So therefore, if to prevent further encroachment, Mr. Chairman, I request the government that the government must aggressively come out with the land monetization policy. Needless to say, uh, my time is up, so I'm not going to waste uh, the time of the House in trying to beseech you to give me more time. All I'm going to say is we, while we support the finance bill, uh, the objectives being noble need to be far sharper in their focus and far sharper and far, far sharper in their execution. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, sir. Thank you, Venagi Mishraji. Next is... Uh... Kausalendra Kumarji. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 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 Th